Welcome to the review, the first UK review of the Skydio 2, <clears throat> which now comes in this tiny little packet. If you haven't seen the Skydio R1 review I did, mm, must be over a year ago now, um, go and check it out. But this is considerably smaller, so it actually comes in this case as standard. As you can see, it's got a little strap there, comes with it. You've also got hooks this side as well of the case. But, and it's sort of, sort of hard. Open that up. Oh, and it is a tiny little drone now. It's tiny. Wow. So Gon has the cage that goes around it. So it's reduced massively in size. And it's supposed to be 50% quieter according to the website. They've got the props on the top and the bottom here. So rather than being the same, each side, like DJI stuff, is actually reversed. There must be some reasoning behind that. It's no longer carbon fiber, that's for sure. It's all plasticky. Um, but it's also worth noting, massively cheaper. So they used to be two grand the R1, $2,000. Then we paid $1,500 for the first one. And then I got another one, which we paid less for. Uh, but anyway, they're about a $1,500 mark. You can't get them anymore, they don't sell them. They've still got parts because we've sent one back for some parts for replacements. Uh, and this is this one. So with this, you have got many options. So this, the recording rate of this is massively better than the previous edition of the R1. So this is 4K now, up to 60 frames a second. You can have 1080, so still HD. Um, in fact, it'd still be HD if it's 720, wouldn't it? Um, 1080 um, at 120 frames per second. So I expect high things of this. The only thing that was lacking on the R1, the R1 was absolutely awesome. I didn't care about its size because following me around on electric unicycles and stuff like that, I want it to track me off-road without having to hire a pilot to fly the, fly the thing. So, and DJI does not cut the mustard in that regard at all. So hence the reason I switched to Skydio. But the guards around it made a massive difference for me. It was very often, I go back and review footage and the guards that used to be around it used to push branches out of the way. Now in the manual, it does say it'll recognize things down to half an inch, but anything smaller than half an inch, then you're gonna have issues. Now with the R1, it would brush them aside. With this one, of course it hits a prop, it's just gonna shatter the prop and it's gonna whoosh. I assume when it loses one prop or two, depending on how it hits into something, it's gonna go down and down hard and smash to pieces. Hopefully not, we will see. But the lens cover, so the practical side of it, stuff you don't really appreciate until something bad happens. This dusts into the ground. It's got a little bit of a thing to hit to talk, take away the impact and to stop you scratching it anyway naturally. Um, but if that hits dirt, it's gonna get scratched up that lens cover and it absolutely requires those to be nice, fresh and clean to be able to navigate and see what it's doing. So as soon as you have an impact, potentially a repair bill for you. Now Skydio, if in the US, they do not warranty these outside of the US they don't ship them outside the US. We had to get it shipped specially with our own FedEx account. So they don't do any of that. In the US, they got a very good warranty. So if it just crashes and you're stuck within the remit of what's in the manual, then they will replace it for you or repair it for free. Not so here, of course. Um, but anyway, worth the risk. This is an amazing product. Skydio are absolutely brilliant. Fully recommend them, even with the R1 with a poor quality camera. It looked very, um, to get a bit of a fisheye going on and it, was, it's not, it wasn't a brilliant image. It was the only criticism, but it, it was brilliant for us because there's no other way of getting that footage. Now, the footage I've seen online anyway, it looks awesome. It looks like DJI quality. In fact, they're claiming it's better than theirs, but we'll leave that. If it was close to theirs, I'd be happy. So that's that. Um, the gimbal cover, they haven't really gone to town in re-engineering this. The old R1 cover, which slotted on the top, was rubbish. Uh, this is very similar, really, really similar design. So you get back after flying, you sort of have to hold that with your finger, slot that down to the middle there, push it right back, and then try and, you sort of have to try and get that middle bit in, and it sort of 
really, it's just really, really awkward. All, all drone manufacturers seem to struggle with making something that's really user-friendly in terms of bracing the gimbal for transport. So there it is, done. So the, it's not slack now, but it's not great. Uh, gotta be some other engineering feat that sorts that out. Now it comes with a battery. And uh, this case, it needs to be removed before you can install it. But that is the battery. Let me tell you what that is. It's a 11.4 volt DC, 4,280 milliamp hours at four, so that's 48.79 watt hours, which should give you a flight time of about 25 minutes, they claim. What's that gonna be? It's probably 20 minutes in reality, but they claim 25 minutes. USB cable and a cloth, microfiber cloth for cleaning the lenses. And some spare props, just a couple. Now I say no prop guard. So I'm gonna assume that I might be using some of them, especially if you're flying in woodland. So I'm talking about here where things start to go wrong is in real thick woodland where you get anything less than half an inch in thickness. That's when it can become a problem. Uh, otherwise, I've never had an incident with a, a Skydio R1 at all. It's just flown perfectly. It hit some power lines once and it just rebooted in the middle of the air and carried on flying. Hovered and it was brilliant, absolutely amazing. Of course, if you're in the UK, this will have been no use to you whatsoever. It's unless you get an adapter for it. It's a US plug. But once you remove this, it actually fits the battery in. So you can fit two batteries in this case, two batteries in the drone and the cables. And then you just fold that over and this goes in your rucksack. So before we had a special rucksack for the I1, a SCARD I1, the R1, for the R1, it's specific for that. And we used to shove other camera equipment in with it. Whereas with this, I can just have an ordinary rucksack, lob it in. So yeah, so keep your microfiber clean. So let's get a battery on it and go and test it out. Um, but first up, before we move on, you may have noticed some other things. Now these are, I would have said, if you're gonna go for a Skydio 2, not an R2, but a 2 they call it. I'm gonna keep calling it like a Skydio R2, I reckon. What you wanna do is get a spare battery. That's a given. The other thing is the beacon. Now, if you're flying through forest areas, uh, anything where you can, or even, I suppose, if you're allowed to, wherever you are in the world, if you're allowed to fly in the country, in the, in the country, and not in the country, but you are in town, city, congested areas, if you're allowed to fly there, which many of us aren't, then it could be useful also. It's the beacon. And what this does is it emits a GPS signal. So the drone locks onto the beacon rather than your phone. So you can fly with the phone, you can fly with the beacon, and you can fly with a controller. Now, the R1, which is significantly worse than this, allegedly, very rarely would it lose me. So when it did, what would be able to do? So the only time it really did, I suppose, at speed, where everything has to be processed faster for it. So you want on a wheel, on an electric unicycle, they can do up to 30 miles an hour. If you get into 25 sort of area and it was fairly thick woodland, it would start to lose you, try and track you, because obviously it's breaking and ducking under branches and all sorts, trying to do all of that and lock onto you at that sort of speed. It occasionally lose you and sit there and hover, didn't do anything wrong, didn't crash or anything weird like that. Incredibly reliable. Whereas this gets around that. So it'll actually go, I tell you what, I can't see you. I'm locked onto a beacon. Doesn't matter. So it's just tracking this, which could be in your hand, could be in your pocket. Not only that, they've gone a step further and they put controls on it. So you can actually control the drone with this. You can zoom in and out, you can stop recording, you can take it left, you can take it right. And it's like a magic wand. You basically point, go we you want to go over here and it'll follow it. So from that point of view, this is probably a given. And as I said, the next thing would be a controller would be a given. So you can do, you can do shots like you would be able to do with the DJI stuff now. Whereas before, if you think about it, the only thing controlling the R1 was my phone. And that was it. Uh, and then you know what Wi-Fi on the phone's like, as soon as it goes away from that phone, you've got problems. Um, whereas with this, you can now control this as if it was like a DJI drone or any other drone on the market with a controller, actual physical controller, as uh, a phone. So that is awesome. So you can get some shots that you wouldn't used to be able to get with the R1. So I'm looking forward to using that. Now they, as far as I know, Skydio or, or Parrot, they partnered up together. So this is actually, I'll take it out so you can have a look at it. It is the, it's got Parrot stamped on the back of it. It's nothing special, this, this um, controller, nothing special at all. Very plasticky, as you can probably hear. Uh, you fold that out, you put your phone in it, um, but on the back it has got Parrot. 
And then you've got your ordinary functions that you have with most drones. I don't think I can go into that too much because that's not really the feature set of this drone. It's the autonomy that's amazing on this, absolutely amazing. So if you haven't seen it already, go and check out Skydio's social channel on Instagram, but also their website. Uh, they're commercializing this as well, so they're gonna use it for surveying and security work, amazingly. So this drone will go back to a box, which isn't available for general public, and we haven't got it either, where it will fly back to a charging station. It will land on it. It sits on the charging station, an arm takes it back in, and a lid comes down, it keeps it in there safe, and it will do scheduled flights, etc. Um, of which can be monitored, of course, and it will recharge itself, so you don't need to touch it that. I mean, how amazing is that? I can't, it's got a special snazzy name for it, I can't remember that, but if you go and look on their site, that's out there for surveying and things like that. So, just to recap, you've got the beacon, as it's called, you've got the controller, and also you can use your mobile phone, which, bear in mind, R1 always being mobile phone, no other way of controlling it, mobile phone only, in your pocket, with a slight caveat, because you can use your watch as well. So with the Apple Watch, you get Skydio 2 app on there, or Skydio 1 app, there's two apps, two versions now. So you've got the Skydio 1 for the R1. If you try and use the Skydio 2 with the R1 app, it won't work, it says you need to install, install the new app. And so there's some new functionality which goes in line with this drone. So you can actually use the watch. So how the watch works is you're flying along with the phone in your pocket thing. I tell you what, I don't want it behind me because you say I want it to follow me, I want it to lead, I want it to go on the side loads of different flight modes. I won't go through all of those. So if it's following, which is the most, uh, I would say the it's the most useful mode because it goes wrong less. If it's leading, so if it's out in front facing you, it doesn't actually know where you're going. It's trying to guess by where you move within the frame it's looking at. And so it's not as um, consistent as the follow. So within follow mode, if you then was following you, you thought, I tell you what, I want to go and fly on my side. Get the watch out and say side. And you choose that flight mode, simple as that. Just quickly look, bang, and it goes around to the side. Amazing, really amazing drone. Really, really good. And this is obviously going to be better. So three flight modes, beacon, controller, and phone. With the R1, you used to be able to take the battery out, which actually pulled out the back, and you plug it into a charge station. Now, as standard, you charge the battery on this one through USB-C. Uh, it's taken quite a while. I've got my MacBook charger charging it, and it's, I don't know, it's been on charge for an hour and a half almost two hours and it's about 70 odd percent. So we're flying this out on 70 odd percent. I'm imagining you can get the accessory or if, if it's not available now, it will come out. It's bound to, isn't it? Absolutely bound to. Slightly frustrating because I mean, we haven't got that. So to charge it, you've, you've the, the drone is out of action whilst you're charging if you haven't got that docking station. So it's worth noting the R1 used to have a solid state drive in it. Uh, this doesn't, you need a micro SD card in there, a high end one, high grade. So recording those sort of frame rates at 4K. So invest in a really good top end, and as everyone knows, don't get ripped off by thinking you're buying a high-end card for cheap. Pay the extra money from SanDisk or wherever. Um, pay that extra money and get a good, actual, genuine card that you can use. So let's uh, get a battery out. It's packaged very nicely, really nicely. So with this, it's incredible. So here we go, done. It's not coming off, and I'm not holding it. It's a real strong magnet. It's actually quite difficult to get back off again. But yeah, really strong. What they are saying is you need to make sure in the manual, if you read all the little terms and conditions, you need to make sure it's always as clean, because if you get, because it's magnetic, you get little fragments of metal in there over time, it can actually start to loosen that off, but it's very, very tight, so it'll take a lot of dirt. It'll be a noticeable amount of dirt in there. Keep that clean is what they're saying, um, and then you shouldn't have any issues, but of course, so if I put this here, there you go. How neat is that? So with this hard case, this can actually be your launch pad as well. Plunk that on there, job done. Off it goes. Now it looks fairly waterproof. I'm assuming it is, I don't think you can drop it in a lake, but it's rainproof, water resistant, should we say. So yeah, um, so what I'll do is I'll boot it up now and just connect the app up. So the important thing here is that you remove this gimbal cover because it will boot up you'll see it in a minute if I put it on a weird angle you'll see it actually come to life and you don't want to leave that on there so it do a bit essentially a calibration this can take a few seconds boom, boom, boom. boom there we go so that's calibrated so it looks like it's looking left a bit but 
you see that? It's alive. It's alive. There we go. So I'll connect with the app, which is the Skydio 2 app. Join the network, it says. And you'll have on top a, a sort of a Wi-Fi name and a password. Now it's connected already. So it says SD card not found. So we need to put an SD card in before we go out and fly. But if I go to info and check out the, it's the latest software on it. So that's fine. It's ready to fly. We've got 74% battery. Uh, film, we're gonna film it 4K, 60 frames a second. So let's go out and test it and try and track a car or something, or maybe electric unicycle, and just see what the footage looks like really, and get some shots of it doing its thing. And we'll test out the beacon as well. Right, it's gonna try and connect this beacon to it. Um, I haven't read any instructions on this. I just literally booted it up. So it says connect to vehicle, and it's got a picture of a USB-C cable, so I'm assuming because you, you can charge the beacon by USB-C as well. So all the accessories are USB-C. Let's just test this, see what happens if we connect that there to there. Looking for Skydio 2, connected, USB in use, launch blocked. Okay, no idea, well I would assume, let's have another look. There's nothing on the app, so nothing's popped up on the app. I am connected to it, but if I just remove that. Uh, okay. SD card not found. So that's now paired, it's as simple as that. It took seconds to plug that in. That's incredible. And it also tells me the battery status of the drone, 73%. It says it on here, so you know just by looking at this what it is without getting the app out. So if you're holding this in your hand, which is very, very comfortable to hold, you can control the drone, you can stop it recording, you can start recording, you can zoom it in and out, bring the drone forward and backwards from you, turn it left and right, and see its battery status all from this. So worthwhile investment, this. It's got a little hook system on the bottom, so you could have it around your neck, you could hang it there if you wanted to. Again, USB-C to charge it, so. Right, let's get an SD card in. Should we just have a quick look to see what we get with the controller? I assume I do the same thing for the uh, Controller, let me go to settings, controller. Pair, Scotty 2 controller, and then connect. So yeah, what you need to do is, as far as I knew, probably do that, and then do that. Maybe. Is it doing anything funky? Oh, it's flashing blue. That's probably done. Probably done. And then you use your phone, allegedly, um, as a um, screen to see what it's looking at. And that's how you use its control, just like you do with other drones. But that should be paired. Probably take that outside. Um, yeah, we'll see. But I'm more interested in the beacon, the autonomy side of it, rather than the actual controller side of it at the moment. So. Right, we'll get on with that now. Get an SD card in. Done. Connecting. Connect. Ready to fly. Height floor is enabled. That's a new feature, that is. Tracking performance may be reduced. Uh, you can change that. It's to do with... Um, it stays eight foot. So obviously you don't smash into cars and stuff is the idea. The other one didn't have that, the R1. But you can get it up to eight foot. Uh, you shouldn't hit people, should you? But you can turn it off and it'll fly lower. Fly now. Okay. Starting Skydio Autonomy Engine. Look at that, right. Hold to take off. Here she goes. That is massively quieter, massively quieter. I believe them with the volume thing, absolutely. Right, let's see then. You may exit the tutorial at any time. I don't want to begin the tutorial. Okay, I want to exit the tutorial. Uh, it says you can, but... Okay. Okay, I don't want to do that. Okay. I'm not sure it wants me to do it. It's saying do the tutorial. Ah! Does it recognise the case? Has it? Do you know what? I think it recognised that case. That's interesting. Right. I'm going to take off again. It seems to want me to do a tutorial. It says you can exit any time and there's no way of exiting it that I can see. Which is a little bit strange to be fair. 
Okay, now 65% battery. Need to get this test done. The initial flying test. Right, ready to fly. Let's fly. Please don't make me do a tutorial again. Don't need to do a tutorial. Hold to take off. Boom. Right, okay. Okay, what I want to do is track me. Good, it's on me. And what I'm going to do is put this, put this in my pocket now. Kit up slightly. Safety first. Helmet on. Right. Let's try it, shall we? So I have some thick, thick trees, small branches as well. Right, seems to be working. Right, motion track, should we do? Vortex. There he goes, Vortex. Starting Vortex. Let's do a quick demonstration of this flight mode. Oh, start Vortex. I should read the screen. Start. Three, two, one. Boom. So this should spin round and round, you see, like a Vortex. But it's interesting because of the light there. See what it does with that? It's just going to go around it, is it? It's pretty cool. And it's got a progress bar on the screen. Very good. Crystal clear. So I do that as many times as you like really, but it is going to stop. So it's gone higher and higher as you can see. Boom. Returning. All automatic. I haven't done anything with that at all. Done its own thing. Switching back to track. All right, let's just take it this way a second. Okay, let's... Uh, okay. Let's try and get this down. So let's try that again, see how it copes with this if I travel forward and see what it does. It's gone too far. What's it gonna do? Right, so let's have a look what it's like through these. So I'll zoom off now. It's trying to fight its way through. Subject lost. So it's lost me. Uh, I'm still not showing, I'm still not showing. I'm still not showing on the screen. Now I am, right, okay. There we go. All right, it's zoomed back out again. So that's how it copes with light to dark and an enclosed environment. So I'm booting up the beacon. So that's booting up, allegedly. Let's see what happens. Beacon's at 39% power. Is it gonna auto connect? Sinking. Come on, work. Come on, sinking GPS. That's working. Is it going to connect to the drone though? Ready to fly. Okay. It's not touch screen though, is it? So, 
fly now, starting Skydio. Let's see if this really works. Is it really gonna work? It's hard to believe. Hold to fly, so I'm pressing and holding it. It's flying in three, two, one. I keep on holding and pressing it. Launching. Sweet. Righty out. And now it says launching. And it says it's going to be behind me. So this is all on this now. It's going to follow this. So can I? Whoa. <laughs> so pressing the minus button. Okay, not really sure what it's doing, but let's have a look. Oh, it's following it. That's working. That's working. It's working really well. Right, I'll take it for a... Let me see what I can do. See if I can go left and right. Hold on, if I stay still. Ah, that's just where it tracks me, okay. Uh, no. That'll send it right back. Okay. That's pretty good. You press and hold that and it'll go. How cool is that? I like that. Right. It's very close to the wall there. Uh, right, it's going to follow me closely. And now... I like this. This is good. Right, I'm going to take it round now and see if it can go under that underpass again, which I've just done a minute ago. Let's see what happens. That's rubbish! That's rubbish! Okay. Yeah, it's not even on me. So I'll keep moving. See if I can make that work now. Come on, back you come. Let's try it the other way. Nah, it's just not doing it. What is it doing? Okay, now I'm worried now, because it's now... Ah, oh, it's got me again, I think. I think it's got me. Right, that, is, that was very concerning there for a second. This is supposed to be the answer to the... Right, it's following me. Let's see what happens again. If I go through quick... Will it follow me? No, it's lost me again. No, it's gone over there. Right. Low battery, land soon, it says. So this beacon is not working as I'd expect it to, to be fair. At the moment, it's not even facing me. Uh, yeah, it's just not... It's not even looking at me. It's flying in front of me. Very frustrating. Right. Okay, I don't know what it's doing. Okay. Let's see if we can get it back. Okay, come on. Film. It's not very good, this beacon. Has to be said. It's not even filming me. It's sort of just not doing that. Okay, let's see if we can get back in control of it. Uh, quickly kind of thing. 3% battery, warning me to land. The beacon, awful, terrible. Does not work really at all. Uh, it kind of follows you. And then it's, hopefully it's recording because it does auto recording. Hopefully it's recorded it where I'm here facing it and it's doing that. So the camera's pointing over there and it's at the front. It's not at the back and it's mm, terrible. So for controlling it point of view, going left to right, that worked really, really well. It started off fine. As soon as it lost me, which should, which should never ever do, it should never lose you because it's tracking this. As soon as I went under the building, it was then, I don't know, it just flew off. 
maybe a little bit panicky because I was thinking, ah, uh, okay. So tracking on the phone, perfect. This needs improvement massively because the exact thing I was thinking it would be really good for is when you disappear for 10 seconds, five seconds in this instance, it would go, well, it's all right because I'm pinned onto this. So I know exactly where that is. And then it knows the objects around it. So that was very odd. Uh, I can't wait to see what the footage looks like actually from that. I haven't seen it yet. Obviously, I do a lot more testing on this and this is brand new. So there'll be updates for both these things, I suspect, uh, to improve it. But the way that it gives you all the details on this screen is it's a great little touch. And all the buttons to start, stop recording, to track it, to turn it left and right, to say you want it filmed behind. You can have much more positioning with it than the R1. You can get it slightly off to set to the back, etc., etc. But with the accuracy with this so far, it was hopeless. Well, I'm out and about the following day. I'm going to test this following the car. One with the phone and secondly with the beacon. Let's get it unpacked. Do, 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 do. <sighs> Takes me a while this. this. This has now gone from 100% down to uh, 97, which is fine. But here we go, fly now, so press and hold the button. Starting Skydio 2. Oh, and it's a sinking GPS again, so I'm not sure. I'll let go of that Skydio button. So it says sinking GPS, so I'll let it do that again. It's gone back to doing that. Um, I'm always a sucker for not taking these off. <laughs> don't know why. <laughs> Getting ready. Okay, now it says starting again without me pressing the button. Hmm, okay. Hold to fly, let's try it again. Flying in three, two, one. Here we go, and you can cancel it by pressing stop button. There it goes. Right, let's see if it follows. Uh, there's no real way of getting it to come back, I don't think. Because now it's going to land. Right in the middle of the road. Hold on. Oh, no, no. That was close. That was close. There we go. Right, so loading video, please wait. Waiting. So it is absolutely epic as we've seen. It follows that car really, really good. The only time it gets a bit dicey, you're on a cliff edge and you wanted to film the white cliffs of Dover or whatever, probably not like to film there anymore, but anyway, um, you're on the edge there. It's gonna be right out there with this beacon. And the only way to do it is to run back inland, get it over land and then press and hold. So it's some very weird situations where you want that. Um, but I'll keep playing about with this and see see where I end up with it to be honest um, because following the car it worked really really well and uh, it didn't hit any of the small stuff coming through as you saw so at the moment it's ready to fly but at night time and it's worth noting this your other drones such as DJI you can see some nice night shots whereas this one once it goes dark because it can't see anymore you're not able to fly it I'm just going to demonstrate now by turning the lights off so it's just ready to fly and then it says, too dark. Skydio 2 cannot see well enough to fly safely. So from that point of view, there's no takeoff look, so you can't tap to take off. So 
so it automatically recognizes it. Turn the lights back on. You see the lights come back on. And in a second, it takes a little while for it to recognize, and then it says calibrating. And then you can tap, tap fly now, whereas that disappears when it's too dark. So, just thought that was worth noting. So, I didn't want to end actually, really, without doing a controller test. Now, the controller comes with cable, so it comes with an iPhone cable and also USB C. So, we're going to try it now. This is not I've done anything with this tool. Just literally booted it up. I'm going to put it down on the floor there, like so. We were just going to leave it, but how could I do that? And then I've got USB-C. Plug that in there. That folds up. And then I get my phone, whatever I've done with it. Allegedly, it's going to work, but we'll wait and see. Now, it just fits in by the skin of its teeth really quite difficult these things isn't it there we go right there we go only just the good thing about it i would note is in its center position unlike the dji ones it's not pressing the buttons on and off so you've still got access to everything connect phone to controller okay so it says on the screen don't know if you can capture that in its upside down angle so i've done that disable your phone's wi-fi and connect your controller to launch so i need to disconnect my wi-fi I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pull down from top right, turn off Wi-Fi, connecting it says. I don't want to tip it up too much. It doesn't feel like it's gripping it that tight. I mean, it, I mean it's fairly, fairly tight, but it kind of feels like it's pushing forward all the time. So now it says connecting. Let's see what happens here. Error, unreachable, okay. Real life gadget reviews, as it happens. Really, it's unreachable. How much when I press that? That's the home button. Hmm. Uh, relaunch the app. Disconnected. Connecting. Now it's connected. Okay. I killed the app and restarted it. it. Seemed to work. Fly now. Okay. Starting Skydio Autonomy Engine. Whoa. Very cool. Right. Okay. Take off. Press and hold to take off. Let's see what happens. First time ever flying a Skydio with a controller. Right, it's taken off. It's finished the process of taking off. And now I can control it. Okay. Yeah, I can control it. How cool is that? Right. So I can just fly it wherever I want and it won't crash. Is that right? I think it is. I can take it up. Woo, look at me go, everybody. Focus. Wow, it's, that's like having a proper drone, that is now. With a controller. So let's take it. Let's now do a bit of a range test. So some seagulls over there. So look at these seagulls. Okay, I'm not going to go real, real far. I'm just going to fly it around a little bit over the site where we are. Oh, look at that! It's, it's handling the. Oh, it's picking up cars and stuff on the screen. So we pass by. We don't have to worry about that chimney because it's not going to smash into it. So what you might be able to see on the screen, hopefully, if I turn back around, you'll see. Look at that lovely view. I'm not going to worry too much about the recording, but it will see cars and stuff. You see that flashing across the screen where it's picked up cars. There you are, look, see? So you could track those cars if you wanted to. So you, you just tap that and it would say, yeah, that's a car. So let's take it over this way. There's a seagull there. That's handling the colors really nicely. You've got the sun out over the bank over the top of the hill there. It should track that car, so we could actually track that if you wanted to. So I'll bring it down. Let's see what happens if I fly it towards this building. Let's have a look. So there's someone there, look. So we're going to fly over this build. I don't have to worry about the height or anything because it's going to move out of the way. So then I'll take it up and I'll bring it back around again. It's like a proper drone, this is. Excellent. There we go. Bit, bit laggy there just for a second. But it's coming back towards us now. So it's still in still in sight. You can see it flying along this way. And we should inspect our roof because we've got a water leak. 
Let's have another look. Question is, can I move this gimbal down? Not sure how to do that. No, none of them are doing that at the moment, any of these switches. Okay, cross the roof. Let's bring it to the right. Okay, there we go. So if I then bring this down, so the question is, can I then fly this through here? So I want to fly, I'm just going to do it, not even care in the world, try and fly through here. So it's pushed out the way itself. That's pretty neat. Let's try again. So where Mario is, I'll try and fly through. Let's get nice and low. Will it be able to go through here? So I'm not doing anything, I'm just literally pressing forward. Yeah, so it's taking it up and over. Okay. So let's try something else. Let's try a bit of something else, shall we? Uh, oh, I know, let's try and go down this path. So I'll bring it right up to the camera. You don't have to worry, Mario, because it's not gonna crash into you. See? Right, I'm now gonna take this. Oh, what a beautiful thing. So you can just about, from behind, get in under there to actually grab it when you turn it off. I'm gonna take it in our pathway and see how I get on. So theoretically, I don't have to, unlike the previous drones, I don't think you have to worry about crashing into something. Because it'll do it, theoretically, of course. So I want to go down this pathway here. I'll bring, the, I'll bring it down a little bit. But I don't actually have to worry about it, theoretically. As I say, so the speed's cut down a little bit. But I'm following this path with not a care in the world and I'll bring it back up. Oh, we lost the signal for a second. Completely lost the signal, and I'll bring it up nice and high, and then I'll come back round again to where we are. That is sweet, and you can hear it. What happens if I bring it nice and low where these trees are? Let's drop it down. Oh, we've got a bit of rain coming in now, so we've done this perfect timing. What you can't get is rain on the sensors because obviously it covers the camera. You've got issues. But here we go, so I'm flying over. What's it gonna do? I'm gonna go straight forward these trees. What's it gonna do? It won't go into them, so I'll take it up. There we are. Wow, okay, that's impressive. Very impressive, so you can fly it. What I'll do now as well, you can fly it without worrying about crashing it. I'll fly it through over the top. I don't know if you can get a shot of this, Mario, up above. But if I take it up high, so we see how fast it goes. Okay, from in here, within the app, you've got drone, controller, or phone. So within controller, you can then do some adjustments. So you can change the gimbal sensitivity, flight sensitivity, and then you can change all this. And you can do your custom one, you can do default. You've got a whole load of settings in there just around the controller, basically. So that's pretty neat. So let's see how fast it goes. So this is full stick forward. This is it. That's as fast as it goes under the controller. So as you can see, that is not the fastest controller you've ever seen or fastest drone you've ever seen. On autonomous mode, it'd go up to 30 odd miles an hour. That is as fast as it goes with the drone, with the controller attached. So it's using autonomy as well, but of course there's nothing up there in the sky. So the next thing I do is I fly it over there. There's a lot of rain coming in, so we have to be fairly quick. Um, and then I'm gonna press the return to home button, so we'll see what it does. Right, so let's try the home button. Returning, it says returning. We'll just see what it's doing. So that now is autonomously coming back like you'd expect. Let's see where it goes to. Hopefully it won't try and go off somewhere real weird. Oh, there we go, so it's right above us. And now it's, it's landing itself, I think. I presume it's gonna try and land. We'll see. No, and then it's, so now we've got on the screen, hold to land, so I'm gonna press and hold to land it, and it'll come down then.
I'll catch it for the sake of it. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So that's done, done and dusted. So it's got some rain on it. So you can fly it with a remote control and it's like having a DJI drone, for example. I keep reference to DJI because it's the only other drones I've ever had. Um, but you can fly it left, right, and it does all the autonomy for you, but then you can direct it to travel in any direction. It doesn't have to follow a subject is the point. So you can still get some great shots, great photo, great video of landscapes or whatever you're doing. But you then also got on top of that, the, all the other features that you get from the Skydio, which is absolutely epic. And for this price in the US, they're $1,000. $999. Now with that, it doesn't come with two batteries, doesn't come with a controller, doesn't come with a beacon. That's just the Skydio with a battery and everything you saw in the box, essentially. Uh, all these were extras. But because we bought R1s, we got a big discount off this. So actually we had to buy all of this for the same price, pretty much, as just the drone in the case. So it comes with a case, the drone, battery, everything you need to fly. As long as you've got a mobile phone, it'll track you. Amazing little drone. Now you can get the charger, the double charger, from the website I checked last night, and you can get ND filters for the lens direct from Skydio, so probably worthwhile picking them up. Also pick up some props as well, if you can. But in summary, it is absolutely amazing drone. With the controller, the lack of speed function might be a problem for you, don't know. But do remember this has just been released. I would imagine they will unlock a huge amount of features and it will only improve, just like the R1 did, so I fully recommend this. It's not a crazy price anymore like the R1, where really it's a bit niche, $1,500, $2,000 it was at one point. This, if you're thinking of getting a Mavic, seriously consider this. I'll see you guys on an updated review in a month or so's time when I've had full use of it, tell you if I've crashed it, how it's all performed, if I've had any issues whatsoever. Like I always do, I'll come back to you because this is real life gadget reviews. Please like and subscribe and share if this has been useful to you. It'd be absolutely brilliant if you could smash that like button because we need the likes to get the channel recognized. Thank you very much, guys. Bit of bonus material. I'm gonna try and see if it flies in here. With the controller attached, let's just see what happens. Fly now. Let's see if it says it can do it. Starting all Skydio autonomy engine, like it did before. Is it gonna see that it's too crammed? We will find out. Oh, okay. It might do it. It's taken off. And it's straight into the ceiling. What's it going to do? Oh, it's hovered there. So I'll bring it down a little bit. Can't bring it down any. Oh, can. There we go. Sweet. Oh, look at all that dust. That's a way to clean the car. <laughs> oh, what happens when it goes into a dark corridor, I wonder? Oh, it turns the lights on. And so now I'm flying it. Obviously, not being able to see it. Can we do a full lap? Brilliant. So, I mean, what else could you do this with? Well, obviously, you can, do, you can get the ones where you know, there's professional pilots. But professional pilots aside, yeah, let's go that way. Oh, I've lost the controller now, so now it's disconnected. Let's see what happens. Connect. Join, wants to join the network. On that corner, it did so well. Unable to join. Connection failed. Cancel, connect, connect, join. Unable to join, right, I'll go closer. It wants to join. Is it gonna join? Unable to join. Cancel, connect, connect, join. Your phone is not, it's down here. Your phone is not connected. Connect. There we are, now connected, so it's back up. Connection regained, Skydio 2 is returning to the launch point. No, I don't want it to return to the launch point. I'll fly it down here and clear this corridor of dust out. Look at this. I'll take it around to the right. She's gone. Look at that. That's best boss.
What a beast. What an absolute beast. Mwah. See you later.